Hey guys, what's up? So this video is brought to you by Linode. If you guys are looking to build a website and you want to host it so that people can actually see it and you don't want to pay a fortune for that, then choose Linode. I know a lot of people are talking about GitHub pages and all this stuff and static websites, but you might as well control the entire stack. And that's going to teach you a lot about being a full stack developer, which is probably one of the biggest skills you could possibly have. So anyway, Linode offers all that to you. You can set up your own Linux server. So anything that runs on Linux, Python, PHP, Node. And they have price points as low as $5 a month. So if you guys are interested, there's a $20 discount in the link below. Hey guys, what's up? So in this video, what we're gonna be looking at is the two top web browsers when it comes to being a web developer. When you're a web developer, it means that you're writing applications for the web, which means that it runs in a browser. And it really boils down to two top browsers out there right now. The number one by far and away is Chrome. And then number two is going to be Firefox. How do I actually say that? It's because if we look at all the top survey results and all this stuff um, is probably not 100% accurate, but I can say just looking at my own server logs, looking at server logs from uh, different companies and things like that, this is probably pretty accurate. I feel like IE might have a slightly higher number than that, but either way, like Chrome is definitely crushing it with, with um, actual browser usage. Firefox comes in at second. These days you have these built-in developer tools that is built into both of them. So just right-clicking and saying inspect, you have all this stuff that we didn't have back in the day, but you have your elements panel. This is all your HTML. You can actually edit this stuff in, in line right here. So if I just want to edit as HTML, I can go ahead and add actual HTML in here. I could put like an H1 uh, right in here and see the results. So I don't have to save the file or have a local copy of it or anything. Here it is up here. And you can just start editing your stuff. And then you could even add inline styles here. Or if you use your style inspector on the right-hand side, I can go ahead and change that color to red. And you could see Hello World is now red. So these tools are actually very, very imperative. And the thing is, though, is that even though Firefox doesn't have the level of support, uh, this is still Chrome, obviously. I need to pull up Firefox one second. All right, so here's Chrome, and one thing I want to point out is when we look at these things, like you can see Chrome is still using like a curvature type thing. If we pull up Mozilla, it's more squarish, kind of similar to what IE looks like, or at least it did before the latest update. And again, if I right-click and I say Inspect Element, you get all the uh, debug consoling, uh, just like you did in, in uh, Chrome Developer Tools. So we have the Inspector, which is what you call Elements in Chrome. Your console, just like in Chrome, you can just simply put some JavaScript right in here and fire it, and it's gonna run that for you. Um, your debugger is where you're gonna be able to put your breakpoints, and the same thing can also be done in Chrome. And uh, the style editor is obviously how you go ahead and uh, edit your CSS, but again, if you just select your elements, you can edit your CSS over here. And then also you can right click and edit um, as HTML, just like in Chrome. So both of these things have a lot of the same level of support. So which one is actually better for developers? So I'm frequently on GitHub and here's an example of a project, which is React. There's 12,739 commits. So if I wanted to get to the first commit of this project, I would have to like scroll through a massive amount of stuff and click uh, older, probably 500 times in order to get to it or, or roughly around that. So there's a way in Chrome on Windows that you that you can do this where you can't do it in Mozilla. So this is one step up that Chrome has. If I go into the Dev Console and I go to my sources and then click this arrow over and I'm going to go into what's called snippets. So if, if you're probably going to be on page initially. So if you just go over here, click on snippets, you can add a new snippet to the page. And then here what I'm going to do is paste in this JavaScript code. And then I can go ahead and just save it, control S, and that'll save the snippet. And then if I just right click on it, I can run it. And what this does is it navigates to the first commit of the GitHub project. So that's something that I can do in Chrome that I notice you cannot do in Firefox, at least on Windows. So a lot of developers are still on Windows, like 43% of all developers out there. So uh, the rest are on Mac or Linux. And on a Mac or Linux, I do believe you have an option of using something called a scratch pad, which is very similar to the console, except instead of typing uh, one thing at a time 
in uh, you know one statement at a time in your console. You can actually write a bunch of statements like you saw with Chrome snippets. All right, so the next thing I'm gonna bring up is the ability to debug both CSS Grid as well as CSS Flexbox. Those are two newer features of the CSS language, which allows us to lay out our content much easier than the old days of using uh, floats and clears and all that stuff. Now in Chrome, we're actually a little bit lacking when it comes to being able to debug some of this stuff. So here I'm gonna go ahead and select the container for the Flexbox here. You can see that it's got a flex wrap property on here and all these child elements. So if I wanna get that one, you can see a flex item one, two. And if I highlight over the element here, I have no option to uh, toggle on the flex. Now you can see the styles over here and, and you know edit them, but Mozilla goes one step further for making this easier to deal with. If we pull it up in Mozilla, and I'm gonna do the same thing, inspect element, and we're gonna look into this one, all right. And now you can see if I click over the flex container, it has this little flex bu button option. So if I click that, it now turns it on and you can see all the spacing and it gives you much more, um, much more uh, or much better uh, debugging capabilities when you're dealing with not just Flexbox, but also with CSS Grid as well. So Mozilla uh, definitely wins when, it, when you, you're talking about using the latest CSS. All right, guys, so the next thing we wanna look at when it comes to CSS animations, which is another new kid on the block, this is what a CSS, a CSS animation is. Um, you have something called keyframes, you have a start, you have uh, all the midpoints, you have the endpoint, and you can just transition certain things using just simple CSS, as you saw from this, uh, this floating box right here. It's a little jumpy for some reason on my Chrome. I'm not really sure why. There might just be too many background processes running, but that usually isn't the case. Now, if you wanted to debug this easier with Chrome, it does have a built-in helper for you, but it's a little bit hidden compared to Firefox. You have to click on uh, this, uh, this little uh, three-dot option, and then it has an option for more tools. And then here you have a bunch of different additional tools down here, but animations is one of them. So you can see it'll pull up this uh, animations tab down here. I'll, I'll tell you when I show you Firefox's version, it's just much better. But here, like when I go ahead and, and refresh it, you can see that Chrome is picking up on the animations. And I just kind of find it a little buggy and janky to work with. It's like this is kind of something that they're, that they're still working on here. Um, just, I think, much more difficult to debug. And with Firefox, if we pull up the uh, dev console tools here, on the right-hand side, where the fonts and the layout and for all this, the CSS and everything, uh, to the right of that, there's all the different additional tools that you have, which includes like layout, uh, the fonts tab. But let's go over to the animations tab, which is what we see here. And when I go ahead and refresh, this plays in a much smoother fashion compared to Chrome. And there it ends. And what I like about it is you can drag your animations and be able to debug them in real time and see exactly what's going on. So um, Mozilla, I think Firefox right now definitely blows away Chrome when it comes to CSS animation. All right, so I should also touch upon the actual speed of the JavaScript engines. They each have their own JavaScript engine and both are extremely fast. Both of these applications actually do consume quite a bit of memory. I noticed Chrome on Windows seems to take up more memory um, right now, it's using up a tremendous amount of memory because I have 32 tabs open, which uh, you know is explainable. And then for the three that I have open for uh, Firefox, so I mean, just a slight, uh, slight bit of extra memory, I would say, noticeable on Windows for for Chrome versus Firefox. Uh, but they're both considered memory hogs. They can have memory leaks where everything crashes and you have to kill the entire browser and restart it. I've noticed that in both of them. All right, so when it comes to actual extensions, a lot of times when we're developing, there's some sort of extension out there that makes our lives easier. They can be things like uh, an automatic keyword thing. Like I have this extension here for Chrome, which says keywords everywhere, and it just gives me keywords on different videos and uh, different you know, pages and things that I'm looking at. And it just picks up on that and tells me what it is. But there are literally millions of extensions on the Chrome web store. One of them for React development, if I could type right, is the React Developer Tools. And this is something I already have installed. So if I were to just uh, navigate over to React and I go to its website, I can see that there's some React components down here. So if I right click and say inspect, 
Because I have that installed, if I go over here, I have this option for this components. And this is the actual React developer tools for Chrome. And I can highlight any one of these components here. So start looking, uh, this live JSX editor is itself a component. A lot of these are anonymous. They should have assigned names to them. But here you can see I can get all the children of each one of these components. And it becomes a little bit more, uh, when you have them named properly and things, it, it can begin, it, it's a lot easier to just debug and see what, what, if it, what I, um, you know, attributes and things you have set on your components. Um, so that is an extension, but the same thing could also be done with uh, Mozilla. So I would say that they, they have you know, equal extensions. If I type React, you can see that there's a React developer tools here. So you get the same sort of functionality in both Chrome and Mozilla. And I think that both of them are, are roughly equal in that regard. Now, one of the additional tools here is we have a uh, more tools. And you're going to notice here that there is no fonts in Chrome that I'm aware of. So like if I wanted to adjust the font on this, I can go over here and I can look and um, I don't I don't have any font, I don't believe. So I, I think this is one area also where Mozilla definitely wins. And um, here though, like if I wanted to just simply, I could search, I can filter, so I'm like looking for font, right? So here's font size. So if I clicked on this and just use the up arrow, I can start making it bigger and smaller, which is nice, but I think when it comes down to it, Mozilla wins on this one as well, because if we go ahead and pull this up, Mozilla has a dedicated fonts panel. And let's go ahead and just inspect this item, this H1 that says React. And then I see that I have this size, so I can just start adjusting the, the, the size of it. I can adjust the line height. I can adjust the spacing between these elements. And you can also adjust the weight to make it thicker, you know, to bolder and everything. Uh, I can even turn on italics. So honestly, like with Mozilla's fonts, it's a pretty fantastic feature. Now, um, a lot of people like the dark mode. This is a light mode for all your editing. Um, so a lot of editors, old school programmers, they all love the, the, the light mode. And then you have these newer programmers, really probably 30 and under, they prefer, for the most part, the darker themes. And I actually like the darker themes as well. That's why I like Visual Studio Code. But in both editors, you can actually adjust your theme. I'm in Mozilla right now, so if I go to the Tools option, I go to Add-ons, and I have this Themes option enabled. I can go ahead and I can use these recommended themes that I can actually install. I'm not going to do that for right now, but for right, I'm just going to go ahead and select the dark version. Just click Enable, and now you can see I get the dark, uh, dark, dark font and everything. So if I inspect, you'll notice that the editor itself does not change, though. So if you've changed it to this dark theme and you actually want your dev tools to also be dark, you need to click on this uh, double option and then click on your settings. And then inside of here, there's going to be this themes option where you have it set on light right now and you select dark. Then you can get that dark theme that a lot of people really like. All right, when it comes to Chrome, you have the same capabilities. Just click on the, the three icons here and go to settings and you can change your theme from light, which is what you guys may have, and then you can change it uh, back to dark. You can also install um, third-party themes on both of these I've seen. Like I've used um, the, the theme that comes with Sublime, and I've actually installed that in my Chrome developer tools, but all those different add-ons and things that you do to alter what Chrome does, it, it does kind of slow things down. So I try to keep my extensions to a minimum if they're not like absolutely necessary. All right, now another thing that I really like about Chrome, and uh, I feel like Chrome was the first one to do this, but I could be wrong on that. But like if I right click and I, I look at this React and I like the color of React, and I'm like, well, what color is that? Again, we could see it down there at the bottom, but I could just simply right color and filter it. But if I click on the actual color box, I can get my, my little um, dropper icon and then I can select anywhere on the page and actually change that color uh, to, you know, change change the color on the fly like that. So. I really like that eyedropper option. However, on Mozilla, you can do the same thing. So I can just click on its little color, grab the eyedropper, and I can change it dynamically. Now, one thing is it looks like every time you select something, it actually clicks off of it. So that's kind of annoying. I think uh, Chrome will win on the eyedropper tool, which I use all the time. All right, guys. So based on everything that we said and everything we looked at here, what is the better option to develop on? When it really boils down to it, is it Chrome or is it Firefox? 
I think, honestly, the edge goes to Firefox when it comes to developer tools. They have much better support for CSS Grid and Flexbox. They have better CSS animation support. They pretty much do everything that Chrome does except for the snippets on Windows. And even that, there's extensions that you can install for it. And then also the fonts. I mean, Firefox definitely wins in that, that font adjustment. So give or take. The thing is, though, is that when you're developing, it doesn't really matter because you're supposed to be testing your end product on all your browsers, which depending on the hell that you might have to exist in, like for a lot of developers working for large corporations, we still have to support IE 11. So we're testing things on IE 11, on Edge, on Mozilla. I keep saying Mozilla because Mozilla is a company that, that creates Firefox, but on Firefox, on Chrome, we have to test on all that stuff. So if you have all that stuff installed anyway, you might as well be using both of them interchangeably depending on what it is that you're trying to do. I didn't touch on the network panel, but both of the network panels on both of these browsers are pretty much uh, on par with each other. So I don't think either one has a clear advantage when it comes to actually analyzing system resources and or uh, inspecting the network panel for like Ajax calls and things like that. All right, so if you guys are trying to get more Chris Hawks content, this is going to be more off the cuff. A lot of people have been asking me to do a podcast, so I'm like, you know, what? I'm going to experiment with that. But the podcast is somewhat of a second effort to my channel. So really, um, you know, what, what you're going to hear on that is going to be a lot different, I think, than what you hear on my channel. And it's definitely going to be a lot more unedited as well. So I don't have much of a plan. In fact, I'm pulling out my phone on these two and just simply talking right into it and without any sort of you know pre-planning at all so anyway if you guys are interested in more content from me you guys can check out the podcast also my website codehawk.com if you guys could check that out and sign up to my newsletter and that way i can get in contact with you outside of youtube and then also if you would please comment like and subscribe i appreciate that it helps me out and that way we can also have a conversation as you guys are leaving comments and if you have any questions for me Drop those in the video as well, and I'll be sure to answer them as soon as I can. All right, guys, thanks for watching, and have a good day. Bye.